Boundary conditions can be a little tough because um, the way these equations are set up, we have to sort of um, go back to the physical form of the equation to fix up the boundary condition and then recalculate, redo the algebra to bring it to our linear form. So I'm going to switch the screen real quick to our equations again, and then we'll take a quick look at that. And then we'll dive into it. So here's our equations again. Now to do the boundary conditions, we're going to be we have to work with this form of the equation in order to um, sort out our boundary conditions. And then we have to recalculate this form. Um, so that's, I think, what we'll do. Um, I think what I want to do is we'll take a little break. I'm going to get these, get this kind of set up on the board so we can kind of work our way back and forth. Um, And we'll start talking about the boundary conditions. So let's come back at 920. Um, and we'll kind of dive into the boundary condition discussion. OK? So 920, we'll see you in a little bit. OK, we're back. Um, I was just writing out the equations onto the board here so we can alter them to handle our boundary conditions. So let's get that on the screen here. Here it is. OK, so this is our physical form of the equations. This is the top part of what you saw on the board before. Um, now, this equation is set up for something that doesn't have to deal with the boundary conditions. But if we're on some of the edges, now we have to kind of work with our boundaries. So um, we'll start off working with the downward boundary condition. So I'm going to draw our grid square, our usual set of grid squares here. So this would be our current grid square. We have our up. Now we're down, uh, left, right, and up. Now, if, so here's a, just a quick representation of our grid here. OK. So the equation as we have it set up now is fine for any of these interior grid squares here, where we've got our flows in four directions that are uh, calculated using the equations. But if we happen to be anywhere along the bottom here, now we no longer have a grid square at the bottom. So if we're on the bottom, we don't have this grid square anymore. Sorry. We don't have this grid square here anymore on the bottom. Instead, what we have is a Dirichlet boundary condition with a constant head value. So that's our h lower value here, h lower is equal to 383 meters. So that's our constant head boundary. So we got to start looking at our equations here. And uh, what we generally do, kind of a good strategy for this, is to look through this equation and find anything that doesn't exist for this particular boundary condition. So for our bottom boundary, Anything where we have a j minus 1 doesn't exist. So things that are going to be problematic here are ki j minus 1. We don't have that. That doesn't exist. That appears in just that first equation, ki j minus 1, or first term of the equation. We also don't have hi j minus 1. And that appears in two places. OK. so. What we can do to fix this problem is this. It's all in circles. OK, whatever.
Okay, so what we can do to fix this problem is we've got to think about what we would do here. So um, we'll talk about K first. So we're trying to find the hydraulic conductivity here on the boundary. Now, what we've normally done everywhere is just get the average of the two grid squares. But since we don't have two grid squares to get an average of, um, what we did in the previous project was we just assumed that the K here and the K here would be the same. So you replace Kij minus 1 with just a Kij. Now, Kij times Kij is Kij squared. Square root of that is just Kij. So what ends up happening is our term here just becomes Kij. Now, Hij minus 1, we can replace that with our H lower value. We can take out our hij minus ones and replace that with h lower. Okay, now when we do all the algebra to get the linear form of our equation, we have to account for all the things we just changed here. So we come over here. Here's our linear form of the equation. Um, and again, I'll show you where those problems were. We have this Kij minus 1 that's problematic. We have this Kij minus 1 that's problematic. And we have this Kij minus 1 that's going to be problematic. The Hij minus 1, that's just this guy here. That's the only one that's going to be an issue here. So we can we'll make that fix first. So instead of this being Hij minus 1, that'll just be our H lower. Um, for our Kij minus 1 issues here, dump these circles. In those three places, this is just going to get replaced with a Kij. careful here. There we go. Now each of those places, we call those just k down in our code. These were our k down values. That part of the coefficient. So that covers our downward boundary condition. So all we really need to change for our downward boundary condition is we need to change our um, Hij minus 1. That becomes H lower. And in our coefficient, our K down changes just Kij. Uh, one other thing we can do. This term here now, this is all made up of constants now. We have no unknowns in that term. So what do we do when we don't have any unknowns in a term? We bring it over to the other side of the equation. So what we'll do is we'll add this to both sides of the equation. So this becomes plus because we're adding it from this side of the equation to the other side of the equation. So now this is everything that's in our B matrix. This is what goes into the B matrix here. And then everything on the other side here is what's in A side of the matrix. OK. So for our downward boundary condition, here's what we change.
change k down. So it's just going to be kij. Change hij minus 1 so that it becomes h lower. And then move that um, h lower term into the B matrix. So that's your downward boundary condition. Any questions on what we did there? I kind of blew through the algebra. I didn't actually do it for you, but um, just kind of pointed out where the changes would occur. So let's jump over to the MATLAB screen and code that. So we're just dealing with the downward direction here. So this is our usual coefficient for our downward direction. Now, the only thing that's changing in our coefficient is going to be this k down value. OK, so what we can do is actually go up here where we define our k down values here. So what we can do is this. If we are on the bottom, so if j is equal to 1, that means we're on the bottom, then our k down is just going to be kij. If we're not on the bottom, then it'll be what we've defined here. OK? So that's the first part. That's how we fix the coefficient. So the only thing that changes in the coefficient is what that k down value is. So now this coefficient is correct whether if we're on the bottom boundary or if we're not on the bottom boundary, because we fixed k down to whatever boundary we're on. Now, as far as applying our um, boundary stuff here, now we got to throw in another if statement here. So. So if we're on the bottom boundary here, if j equals 1, then that first term for our downward direction is no longer going to be just the coefficient times, or is not going to be the coefficient. So if j is equal to 1, we're actually moving this stuff into the B matrix. But what we're putting in the B matrix is our coefficient, because that didn't change. That's our coefficient multiplied by our h lower. Otherwise, we're going to do this stuff here. OK, so this covers our downward boundary condition. And this is the stuff that we would have done otherwise. So this is just the same stuff we just did on the board. Uh, all we changed here was um, we changed our coefficient. Well, actually, we left our coefficient alone. We changed our k down for the boundary. So we used an if statement here. If j is equal to 1, k down is kij. We talked about that on the board. Otherwise, our k down is as we had it before. Okay. Then our coefficient calculates the same either way. 
for our down and up. And then for our downward direction, for our downward direction, if we're on the bottom, we'll use our boundary condition, which means we take that coefficient, multiply it by h lower, and move it all into the B matrix. Otherwise, we leave it as we did before. We find our column in our A index and put the multiply the coefficient by negative one or you know, negative coefficient, put that in the A matrix. Okay, so that's our downward boundary condition. Okay, so I wanna take a second here and put together our left and right stuff real quick because I never did that on the on this setup before and I think it's an important thing to do. So um, here's how we would set that up. So this is left and right. So we still define our coefficient. That's going to be uh, the same basically dt divided by ss multiplied by, this time it's dx squared instead of dy, multiplied by uh, k left plus k right. So that's going to be our coefficient. Now we'd still need to find our column. Uh, let's do this as down first. So. So in the downward direction or column, we're going to look in our index array. We're going to look for i minus 1, j. I'm sorry, I called this down. That's supposed to be left. That's real confusing. Sorry about that. OK, so our column for left is i minus 1, j. So that's looking to the left. And then we'll want to put our coefficient into our row column, same as before. Same idea for the right. Our column is going to be equal to our index array. This time it's i plus 1 and j. And we place our coefficient there as well. Then we'll get to our diagonal. For our diagonal, it's A row, row, right? Row and column are the same in the diagonal. And it's a contribution here to the diagonal. So we'll do this. A row, row equals 2 times our coefficient. OK, so that's how we'll do the. Um, hey, Dr. Williams? Is it is it necessary to have that line in there a second time? Since we have it up uh, just after the up term? Yeah, because the, the coefficient here is different. Oh, gotcha. OK, thank you. A different coefficient. And you know, it's kind of long winded to do it this way because we're the reason I'm doing it this way is I'm breaking it up by each direction. Because once we get the rest of the boundary conditions in here, um, for left and right, we'll have to treat the diagonal a little bit differently. For up and down, we don't. But for left and right, we do. So I'm kind of breaking it up. So anything that we have to change, we'll do individually. Yeah. OK, 
So that gets us our left and right. And it's basically the same as what we had before we started applying boundary conditions for up and down, the difference being uh, our array index. Really, that's it. OK. So let's go back to the board, and let's look at another boundary condition. Any questions on downward boundary or left and right without boundary conditions just yet? OK. So let's go do the, the down boundary. All right, hold on a second. I pushed the wrong button and it set me back. Okay, now let's push the right button and get this showing on the screen. OK, so now we're going to do the up boundary condition. OK, so we have, again, our grid. And here's our little sample grid. Very quick and dirty. So again, the equations that we have below here, this applies in the middle where we don't have a boundary condition. But if we are in this upper area here, in this top row, then we no longer have a grid square up here. We have a boundary condition instead. So if we're on the top, we don't have this grid square. What we have instead is h upper and that's equal to 404 meters. Now again, just like before, we're still we're trying to find the k value on this boundary. Uh, the best we can do is we can assume it's the same as the k value here. So that's what we'll do. So now we can go through our equation and figure out what we're missing if we're on the top boundary here. So if we're on the top, We'll look at k's first. We don't have kij plus 1. That's missing. We also don't have hij plus 1. That's missing. Everything else is fine. So we need to figure out our replacements here. So we'll do k first. So we're replacing kij plus 1 with just kij. kij times kij is kij squared. The square root of kij squared is kij. So this term here just drops down and becomes kij. OK, so the hij plus 1 terms we don't have. But what we do have instead is our h upper. So we can replace these with h upper. OK, now we can do the algebra and so now we want to do the algebra, move this over to our linear equations. Again, I'm not going to go through the, the individual bits and pieces of doing this algebra here, but I will, again, go through circle the pieces that we don't have here in our um, equation. There we go. So in this equation, which is the same equation, it's just an algebraic step from the other one to this one. In this equation, we do not have hij plus 1. We do not have kij plus 1. And that appears in three locations. OK, so those are the things that we need to get sorted out first. So here's how we'll sort those out. There we go. 
So the KIJ plus ones, we end up replacing that term with just KIJ. So let's go through and do that. Whoops, I'm going to bring that plus back when I rewrite it. So all we need to do here in the code is replace K up for this boundary condition with KIJ. The other side of this is we need to um, replace this HIJ plus one that becomes our H upper. Now, this whole term here does not contain any unknowns anymore. So it ends up on the other side of the equation. I'm going to try to pull some iPad whiteboard shenanigans here. Let's see if it'll let me. OK, it's not letting me do it. So sometimes my whiteboard's too full now, but when the whiteboard has less stuff on it, it'll let you pick up and drag things around and move them, but I can't do it anymore. So here's what I'll do. Oh, I still can't do that, can I? Okay, so this stuff that's constant here moves to the other side of the equation. So the way we'll do that is we will simply add it to the other side of the equation. Maybe I'll get rid of this. No. OK, so now we move that to the other side of the equation. I know it's a little weird setting it up that way, but basically, this term gets added to the HIJ old plus QI over A delta T over SS plus this whole term goes to the B side of the equation. Everything else stays on the other side of the equation. And now we're ready to code it. So the only changes that we made here, so here's our list of changes. Our K down, I'm sorry, our K up has now become just Kij instead of square root of Kij times Kij plus 1. Our H ij plus 1 has gone to h upper and our h upper term hold on how did i state this before yeah our h upper term goes into the b matrix so those are our changes so let's switch over to the MATLAB screen and affect those changes. Okay. So this is back, this is for the upward direction. So the first thing we needed to do was um, we wanted to change our K up. So K up instead of being this is going to do this instead. So if j is equal to, now we're at the top, so j is equal to nx. Yeah, 
j is equal to nx. Sorry. If j is equal to nx, our k up is just going to be kij. OK, so that, that takes care of the k terms. Cool. Now, when we calculate our coefficient, it'll plug in the correct k up if we are at the top. Now we need to go in here and take care of the stuff in here. So if j equals nx, did I type that right before? Yeah, OK. Anyway, if j is equal to nx, so we're on our boundary there, then that term, that upward term ends up in the B matrix. Multiplied by our H upper. Otherwise, we're not in the top, and we'll do everything this way. Now, for our diagonal, it doesn't matter if we are um, on the boundary or not for the up and down directions, because the coefficient gets adjusted correctly um, you know, either way here. So really, the big thing is setting k down or k up based on the boundary condition. And then if we're on that boundary, then the uh, small piece of it ends up in our B matrix instead. OK, so that's the upper and, upper and lower boundary conditions. That stuff's done. We've got all that in here now. We're done worrying about upper and lower boundary conditions. In fact, we're done worrying about the upper and lower direction parts of the equation completely now. So we've got our, our down, we've got our up, we've got our diagonal. Sorry, Dr. Williams? Yes. Do you mind going back up to the if statement for k up? Yes. I mean, no, I don't mind. Here we go. I just want to make sure I had it right. Thank you. You got it. So you can kind of see things are pretty symmetrical here. Um, whatever we did for up or whatever we did for down, we did the same thing for up. We just changed our uh, our array index. And we changed lower to upper, basically. But the uh, stuff that we've done is symmetrical. So you look at the code, it's basically the same code both times, just very slight differences. Go ahead and save that. Okay, so let's start talking about the left and right boundary conditions. Now, if you think back to the uh, first project, Left and right were super easy because it was a no-flow boundary and everything just uh, zeroed out. It's not as easy for the transient case. So let's start looking at it. I'll post this all the code that we write. I'll get posted on the Canvas page as well. So if you miss something, it'll get posted. Okay. So what I did while we were taking a break, I wrote out the equations and copied and pasted everything four times so that I could go through this for each direction of the boundary conditions. So now we're going to look at the left 
boundary condition. So again, we have our grid. That's our current grid square. We have down, left, right, and up. OK, so here's our stylized grid. Now, if we're on this boundary condition, if we're on this side here, now we have, along this direction, a no-flow boundary condition. So across that boundary, we have no flow. We also don't have this grid square anymore. All we have defined there is we know that Q equals 0. OK. So let's go through our equations and figure out what we're missing here. So in our equation here, we don't have hij or hi minus 1j. That does not exist. It appears in two places here. We also don't have ki minus 1j. So that doesn't exist. OK, now once again, for the k term, we can make the assumption that the k here is the same as the k here. So we can replace this um, ki minus 1j with just a kij. kij squared, square root of, becomes just kij. So that term goes to, or that piece goes to kij. Now, the hi minus 1j, we have to figure out what to replace that with. Now, in uh, the upper and lower boundary conditions, we had a given value we could use to replace that. But for the left and right boundaries, we don't have that given value. So now we got to figure out what that's going to be. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a virtual grid square. And we need to find the h value in that virtual grid square. We'll call it h sub v for virtual. Now, this is a no-flow boundary condition. So we know that there's no flow across it. We know that q equals 0. Now we can bust out some math that we know. We know that using Darcy's law, q equals negative k times the gradient of h. A gradient of h here is just going to be, so we're going to replace that. That's going to be um, our h virtual minus our h ij divided by the distance, which is delta x. OK, so we want to solve this now for h v. Now we know that q is 0, so this equation goes to 0. So we can pretty much cancel out delta x and k, right? So we can you know, multiply both sides by delta x, and that goes away, because it's multiplying by 0. Multiply both sides by negative k, that goes away. And then we can solve for hv, so we end up with our h virtual equals hij. So a whole lot of work to not really get us much, but that gets us what we need in order to solve this here. So we can replace these hi minus 1j's with just hij values. All right, so we have hij minus 2 times hij. That gives us negative hij. So
So basically, that's what happens here. Oops, I've got some things that look like negative signs that need to get cleaned up. Hold on. There we go. I made a slight mistake here. So let's go back and talk a little more about this KIJ term here. Let me put that back the way it was, actually. OK, so I said we could assume that um, that uh, a little more cleaning here. So I said we could assume that the k value here is equal to the k value here. But actually, we could make a different assumption that would actually be a lot more convenient for us. OK, so the k value here, we know that there is no flow across this boundary. So the k value basically gives you the maximum flow rate that can occur across a boundary. Since, or yeah, it gives you the maximum flow velocity across that boundary. So there's no flow. That means our maximum flow velocity there is zero. So we could assume that Ki minus 1j is actually zero. Make that look like a time sign, not a plus sign. So what happens if you multiply Kij times zero? It becomes zero. What's the square root of zero? It's zero. What's zero times everything else on here? I'll give you a hint. That would be zero. That would be zero. Okay. So what we end up with instead for our left term is that. So the changes we had to make in here, we just got rid of that left term, conveniently enough. We'll leave that with this. And then in this term here, we got rid of a couple of things. So we changed HIJ minus 1 to just HIJ. HIJ minus 2 HIJ becomes negative HIJ. So let's write this in purple so we can show that we've made a change here. Now we can do the algebra to bring this over to our linear version of the term. OK. So things that change here. Our left term here. Has gone to zero. And so anywhere that we see uh, Kij minus one, I'm sorry, Ki minus one j, that will go to zero. So let's see, we have this guy here, that's going to go to zero. We have this guy here, thank you. We have this guy right here, also going to go to zero. And this guy right here goes to zero. OK, so that's our Kij terms. And then our h i minus 1 uh, term here. gets replaced with a HIJ? No. Yeah, gets replaced with an HIJ. 
So this term here is a problem as well. So turns out once we do all the algebra, this term here actually disappears completely. Hold on just a moment. Sorry, I'm just double checking, making sure I'm telling you the right thing before I tell you, you know, the wrong thing. That's correct. So when we do the algebra, and for this one, so for the uh, up and down boundary conditions, it was easy to just kind of do the replacements. For this one, most of what's happening here actually comes out in the algebra. So um, that term goes away when we do the algebra. The other thing that happens is this. In um, this term, where this is multiplied by 2, it's no longer multiplied by 2. It's just multiplied by 1, or, you know, just leave it alone. So that's one of the things that happens here. Now, these kij terms here that are circled, those go to 0. So they just go away. So here's the changes. Sorry for the little delay there, trying to make sure I told you the right thing. This part's difficult, so I want to make sure I don't get it wrong. So for our left boundary condition, Our left term goes to zero. Our k left term, which still exists in our right uh, directional term here, that goes to zero.
and in our diagonal, we only multiply the coefficient. We don't multiply the coefficient by two. in the diagonal. So those are the changes we got to make for our left direction, or for our left boundary condition. Now notice, with our left boundary condition, With our left boundary condition, we're actually making changes in our right direction flow. See, we have this change here in our right direction flow. So so we actually have to, with our left boundary condition, we still need to address that uh, part of our equation. Okay, so let's go to our MATLAB and kind of sort out how we're going to do all these things here. Okay. Again, I realize this is the, this is the harder, the hardest of the boundary conditions for both projects. So it's going to be symmetrical for the right. So you know, we've, now we've seen it once, but okay. So this was our our up stuff. Now we're on the left and right. Okay. So the first thing we're gonna do, I just scroll down to this, but the first thing we want to do here is we want to go and deal with our k value. So k left. So for our k left, if we're on the left side, that means i is equal to 1. If we're on the left, our k left is 0. OK, so we first change that. So if i is equal to 1, that means we're on the left side. Our k left is 0 because we're on our no-flow boundary condition. OK, that'll come in handy down here when we calculate out our coefficient. So our coefficient is always going to be um, calculated this way. I think the best way to do it is to take the stuff we've got so far here and kind of set that aside for non-boundary condition stuff here. So what I'm going to do is this. So if we're not on the boundary, so if i is not equal to 1 and i is not equal to and x. Oop. Guess what? I caught an error here. That's supposed to be an ny. And this is supposed to be an ny. Sorry, that was back with the down and up. I used nx where I should have used ny. Again, because our grid's 50 by 50, that's a problem that would never actually become an issue. But um, if you had a non-50 by 50 grid or a non-square grid, that would very quickly become a problem. So I fixed it real quick. OK. So if we're not on the boundaries here, so if i is not equal to 1 and i is not equal to nx, then we'll do what we're normally going to do here. 
But if we are on one of the boundaries, then we're going to have to do things a little differently. Because if we're on the left boundary, it not only affects the left flow, but it also affects the right flow. Um, primarily because, let's say, so if we're on the left boundary, which we're talking about, then our left flow term goes to zero. And our right flow term is affected by the um, change in the coefficient, which actually would be fine for up here. Um, but also, the main thing that gets affected is going to be the diagonal. So here's what we'll do here. We're going to be on the left side boundary. <clears throat> but we need to deal with the right hand flow direction. So if we're on the left side boundary, if I equals 1, and this is an if statement inside of this else, because we're dealing with non-boundary condition here. This is all the stuff for not boundary condition, any boundary condition. But if we are on any of the boundary conditions, we've got to handle a couple of things a little different. So if we are on the left, if I equals 1, there is no, no term for left-hand flow. It's a 0. And in our matrix, it's already a 0 because of the way we initialized our matrices. So we don't even have to worry about it. But we do need to deal with the right-hand flow direction. So our column that we're going to deal with here is going to come from our right-hand flow. So that's i plus 1 in the right direction, j. And we need to put our coefficient in that direction there. So a row column is going to be our coefficient. And it'll be negative. We also need to deal with the diagonal. So a row row, that's our diagonal. And we're going to place our coefficient in there as well. OK, so that's our left side boundary condition here. Um, there's more. Let's go ahead and end that for now. So now we got to do our right side boundary condition. Any questions on the left side boundary condition? I'll go through the same process with the right side boundary condition and um, It'll, it's the same thing, but it's, you know, it's symmetrical. So it's looking at the other direction. But let's switch over to the whiteboard and run through that. And it'll be kind of like a review of what we just did, except in the other direction. Come on, whiteboard. Let's last for the entire class today. There's a lot of stuff on today's whiteboard. And like I said, it just kind of wipes the wipes out the memory on this iPad to run with this much stuff. But it works. OK, so now we're on the right side boundary.
Okay, so we have our current grid square. We have one up, one down, left, and right. In our full grid. Now we're over here. Up against another no flow boundary condition. So we don't have this grid square. What we have instead is we know that Q is equal to zero. We also know that Q is equal to negative K times the gradient of H. Gradient of H is just going to be, so we create our virtual grid square like we did in the last one. And we know that the head there minus the head in our current grid square divided by delta X, we want to solve for HB. We know that Q is equal to zero. So we end up with HB equals HIJ when you do the algebra there. Going through it quick. Okay. That's interesting. Okay. So let's look at our equations here. What we what do we not have on the right side? We do not have K I plus one J. We do not have H I plus one J, which appears in two locations. Okay. So we need to make our replacements. Because it's a no flow boundary across this boundary here, we can go ahead and assume that our maximum flow rate would be zero. And that's controlled by uh, the K value, K I plus one J. So um, we'll call that a zero. And actually the flow at that boundary is a zero. So this whole term here, will go to zero, which means this entire term here will go to zero. Or it just goes away. Now the HI plus one J here, that can that's our H virtual, and that is equal to HIJ. So we can replace this with HIJ, and therefore uh, minus 2 HIJ plus HIJ just becomes negative HIJ. OK. So that's how our physical side of the equation changes. Then when we bring it over to our linear form by doing a bunch of algebra, what ends up happening is that this term goes away. This just gets multiplied by 1 instead of by 2. And uh, the ki plus 1j, this term here, that's, or this piece of the term here, that goes to zero. And we're left with that. Uh, it also goes to zero here. So we're left with that. So the changes we had to make here through that algebra are this. K right, in this case, goes to 0. Our uh, H I plus 1 J term goes to 0. And our diagonal coefficients only multiplied by 1 in the diagonal. In our code here, again, since we don't have a right flow direction in our right side term, all we have to deal with is left flow direction. So we have uh, right side boundary left flow direction. 
right side flow, uh, right side boundary, left side flow direction. So now we're on the left boundary. So if I is equal to nx, we find our column for a left direction flow. So that's our index array. And we look for left direction. So that's i minus 1, j. And then we can start placing our coefficients. So the rest of this will look the same. Okay, so that takes care of that. The other thing we need to do is we need to go back up to our k values and change our k right to a zero for this uh, particular boundary condition. So here we go. So we've got k right. So if i is equal to nx, then our k right is going to be zero. OK, so that takes care of that part. So again, it's symmetric. It looks just like k left, with the exception of this array index. And then we get down here, and we plug all that stuff together. Now, once we've done that, we're done with populating the A matrix. So we can close out these two for loops that started our this whole setup here. So at the end of all this, we can do um, and the J loop. Sorry, that's the I loop. And, and the J loop as well. 